with with language and culture it's very easy for most people to take one and not take the other um and by that i mean appropriation with the language or appropriation with the culture but you know the the ignoring of the other right in today's video maggie and i will be talking about the intersection between culture and language you're watching fitted culture on Kara's maggie tv what up everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another season of fitted culture y'all we are in year six thank you all for rocking with me and I'm super excited to be starting off this season with a dare content creator friend who is also a podcaster. We're going to talk about her podcast in a little while. But Elle, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you so much for having me, Maggie. I'm so excited that we finally get to chat. Yes, we've been trying to set this up for quite a while now, y'all. But we finally, you know, you know, I think everything happens in its time. It wasn't the time to do it the last time. Now I have more clarity of what I want to talk to you about today. So I'm really excited about this episode with you. Oh, me too. Me too. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I wanted to kick off this season by talking with Elle is because she has a podcast called Speaking in Tongues or Speaking Tongues. Speaking speak in tongues. tongues. Yeah. Why did I say speaking in tongues? I mean <laughs> <laughs> speak in tongues okay so if you're a podcast lover you love learning about different languages i think what i love the most about your podcast l is how you're speaking to people about languages that sometimes we don't really have at the forefront you know a lot of indigenous languages of people really putting a highlight on them and i just love everything about the podcast so i said you know what I need to have you on the channel so we can speak a bit more about love for language, language overall, everything language. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Absolutely. So, <laughs> <laughs> so just to give you all an overview. So for this season of Fit Culture, it's going to be about languages. As you know, from 2021, I started doing a lot of content related to Creole languages. We had a lot of great guests on here and it has been a learning experience for me. And so I wanted to continue that. And this year, I'm happy to say that we be touching on the base of speaking more about English, Creole-based languages, and also just English variation. So without further ado, let's get into this <laughs> video. So Elle, you know, I got to ask you. <laughs> ask me. Ask <laughs> you started a podcast all about languages because you have mm -hmm. a love for language so I'm a bit curious mm, what made you interested first of all in learning languages because I did a little bit of creeping about you and you actually speak a couple languages so <laughs> I can't remember them off the top of my head but I, know that you I love that languages <laughs> yeah so um uh I started studying languages like pretty much I've always been interested in languages and I've always been interested in travel and I've always been interested in like what's going on around the world and and what's happening in other places than where I am. I, I'm in New York City right now. And so there's so much here. There's so many people from so many different backgrounds here. And that definitely played a part in sparking my curiosity about what's what else is out there? Like, what else can I see? Um, for me, I think my love of languages really started in high school. I studied Latin for four years and um, I know, I know. And when I, when I first started taking Latin, I was like, oh no, I don't want to do this because like nobody speaks Latin, like who cares? But I was in an honors program and everyone who was in the honors program had to take Latin or else forfeit the honors program so my parents were like yeah deal with it like suck it up and whatever um but throughout those four years I really grew to loving Latin and what I loved about it was that I was able to use Latin construction and Latin words to understand words in Spanish and words in Italian and words in French and um after high school, I wanted to continue studying Latin and I, long story short, got some really bad advice that I shouldn't bother with Latin anymore, but instead I should take Italian. So I started studying Italian, completely fell in love with Italian, love Italian to this day so much. 
Um, and I did that for two years. And then my last semester of college, I had like credits to make up. So I took like an intense French class and I dabbled. I, I want to say dabbled in French because I, I didn't really learn much, you know, like it was just very introductory and I felt like I didn't learn anything. Um, and so that was college. But then like after college, um, you know, I really wanted to try to learn other languages. So I started learning Arabic on my own and that was a complete disaster. Um, <laughs> I started <laughs> learning a bit of in high school. I learned a bit of Greek also because I, I was I, I was friends with a bunch of um some of my classmates were Greek, so I learned a bit of Greek then, and I tried to continue studying that by myself. And, and you know, this was a long time ago, so self self studying for languages was really just like go to the library and get a book and kind of figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. And you know that kind of carried me through like my travels. I'd always try to learn something before I got on a plane and went somewhere and try to understand how to say certain things. And I've always been really interested in communication um, in that way. So. To answer your question, how many languages do I speak? I speak English, right? And I'm mm -hmm. studying French. I'm I'm improving my Italian, I like to say. Um, and my French is actually getting a lot better. Um, it's very, very slow progress. Don't look at my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at my Instagram and, and see how I mispronounce like so many French words, but it's 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 coming along and I you know, I think back to like three years ago when I couldn't even understand anything in French and now I can like, okay, I can understand. I may not respond in the right tense or in the right, you know, um, have the right vocabulary, but I'm, I'm proud of myself. Like yeah, I did, I'm doing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so intense. And you know, it's really, interesting that you mentioned that the first language that you really got into and in learning was Latin because for those who don't know and you know Elle already mentioned it it has a lot of um, a lot of the other languages those romantic languages they have roots in Latin languages so um, in Latin the language so French Italian you know Portuguese all of those nice languages that everyone loves so much so mm -hmm. I'm curious to know then how did you learning Latin, how easy was it then for you to pick up these other languages since they were kind of, you could say, somewhat born out of Latin? Right. Um, grammar wise, it did not really help me, but vocabulary, it did. Because when you have words that, and even with English, I should say that too, since this is like your English series, like it really helped me to understand like, you know, when you have a, the beginning of a word is like re, or like R-E at the beginning of the word, you know, it's something you have to do again. Or if you have something that's like, um, I can't even think of another one. I'm completely going blank, but the construction of words and suffix, suffixes and prefixes that go onto words, um, noticing that those came from Latin helped me understand, okay, this is something that I'm doing again or something that I'm doing or this this involves like um I don't know like a community or this is part of a you know this relates to cows or this <laughs> relates to the weather or something like that so yeah. um a lot of that kind of understanding came into play um and then you know in in Italian um which I would say was my first leap after Latin um, it really helped me vocabulary wise to kind of understand like thing like basic things like colors and numbers and the weather and the names of animals and things mm -hmm. like that. Understanding masculine and feminine gender um, and, you know, things like that. But grammar, the grammar construction was completely different. So that's where it didn't really help me at all. Got you. Well, yeah. I really appreciate that you mentioned that because one thing with like this project that I've been working on in terms of like really putting, you know, curl based language to the forefront is trying to have people understand that for, for a long time, it, they were referred to as being like broken English, broken French, like just broken form of like that language. And it's interesting that you mentioned that for grammar, it didn't really help you that much in learning those languages. But when it comes on to the vocabulary, 
it was easy to kind of like pinpoint errors. And it's the same thing, y'all, when I'm talking about curl based languages, like it's literally the same thing. So you will find that the grammar is going to be where it's a bit different. And that's where you can see these are legitimate languages because they don't have the same grammar as their parent language, as you could call it. But the vocab is where you can, you know, help you learn across the board. So one thing for me, I challenge myself to like relearn French. And by relearning French, it has helped me to understand different French-based languages that even mm. if I don't know the um the vocabulary for all of them, the grammar is what really helps me that when someone speaks, I'm like, I can pick up and understand what they're saying. So that, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm glad you confirmed yeah. that for me, okay? <laughs> if you've been loving this video so far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like and share. Leave us a little comment too. It helps us with the algorithm. If you don't want to miss out on other videos like this one, at the end of watching it, remember to turn on your post notifications. Now, let's get back to the video. I know that you already mentioned with living in New York, you know, we already know how culturally diverse it is. I live in Toronto. We call it like the New York version of America because it's also culturally diverse. You can find all kinds of people here. Oh, yeah. I want to know. <laughs> I want to know from you. How does mm -hmm. language and culture, you would say, intersect for you? That's a really that's a really good question. And I'm I'm glad that you asked that because this is something that I think about all the time in how to explore language and culture and how to make those connections real connections and tangible connections and not just like two things that I want to go together. Um, and I think that with, with language and culture, it's very easy for most people to take one and not take the other. Um, and by that, I mean, appropriation with the language or appropriation with the culture but you know the the ignoring of the other right um and i think that i like to say i think that those that language and culture are inextricable and i also talk about food quite a bit um with in my show and i i, I like to lump food in there with that as well even though lump is not a beautiful word, but I like to add, <laughs> I like to add food into there as well, because I feel like these are things that create community. I feel like these are things that draw people together. You know, language is your way to communicate verbally, um, but you, you, you draw connections to that. And when you share culture with people who are like you or people who are curious about your culture, um, you're creating a bond, you're forming a bond, you're forming connections. And then food, as we know, brings people together. Food is something that's recipes are passed down through families, through generations. We gather and we eat together. And when we eat together, what is that? That's a that's a, a cultural thing. That's a shared thing. And we're often talking. We're often conversing and communicating. And so all of these things together, you can take them as a, a part. You, you can take them apart as their own, but I feel like they're stronger together. And I feel like there's their they're more powerful together when you have those things in alignment um, with yourself, with your community, with your family. Um, I feel like you're so, you can be so much stronger. Um, and there are other intersections in there as well. Like identity is a big one. Um, and that's something that can either cause you great pride or cause you great distress, depending on what side of that you fall onto. Um, and I think that I think that, you know, these are things that I, I want to see celebrated. These are things that I think deserve to be celebrated and um, and enjoyed. Um, there's so much to say. <laughs> Honestly. So much to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that you summed it up pretty beautifully because if I'm going to be honest, like just speaking from my experience, with me moving to so many different countries, I know – one of the easiest ways for me to connect with people has always been through the language. So understanding, you know, the locals, how they talk versus the tourists kind of. I, I even loved how you mentioned when you're traveling to a place, you're like looking for 
what are the ways I can communicate with locals? Because I feel like that is one thing you can see the appreciation that they also have that you're also trying to get to know them versus just come and visit and then you're gone. So Mm. um, I find that most of like the bonds and friendships that I have built with people who are even from other countries, but finding that shared like experience in the language and also when you combine food in it, it's an epic experience. So right. highly, highly right. recommend. You know, it, it just opens up your mind to different possibilities, different ways of making bonds with people. I feel like you also get to connect with people deeper that they kind of trust you more versus mm-hmm. being too standoffish in the beginning. That is what I have seen from like my personal experience. Yeah, and absolutely. And, you know, like you said, you know, you're forming that connection through language. And I think we both know that there are people who travel to different parts of the world and one specific part of the world I'm thinking of and they 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 go there and they don't interact with anybody who lives there they don't yeah. have conversations they don't go off of the all inclusive to go <laughs> and see <laughs> what the food yeah. is like to see what the vibe is to see what 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 people are doing and not that you have to go and look at people like they're in a zoo of course not but you can share fellowship with people in their home and appreciate that this is their home and you are a guest in their home and you can do that respectfully 100 percent agree with you (laughs) yeah and i'll actually plug one of the episodes that um it was with you and Two yeah, Saints. two Saints. Mm-hmm. They are um, St. Lucian Creole instructors and they wrapped up that part, like exactly what you said. They um, elaborated on it beautifully. So I'm going to link that episode specifically for you all to check out. Please listen to it and also just listen to all the episodes because you can learn something from every single episode that she has. So <laughs> um, I'm going to segue. You. No worries. So I'm actually going to segue into talking about Um, So before we actually go into talking about your book, which you recently released, I'm excited to talk about that. Um, What would be your advice or what are some key things you would say that someone needs to be prepared for when they're thinking about learning a new language? (laughs) What a good question. Um, To be for someone to be prepared for, I would say this. Do not have any expectation that this is an overnight process. Um, give yourself the grace to uh, give yourself the grace to go through the process, respect and appreciate the process because the journey in itself toward fluency, whatever that is and whatever that means to you, um, it's a journey that should be enjoyed and should be enjoyable. Um, don't compare yourself to the people who say fluent in 30 days, fluent in X amount of days, or this is how I completely fluent in a year. Like, no, it, 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 there's no magic formula. So just be prepared to do the work and what that work looks like is different for everybody else, but you know, it is a process and just, you know, be patient and be, you know, be ready to enjoy that process. It should be enjoyable. It should be fun. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) I love that you mentioned like not like comparing yourself to like do it in a certain time frame to hit a certain milestone because you won't enjoy the process because putting that extra pressure on yourself to do something that you're new at is the most frustrating thing. It will actually allow you to give up quicker. So I hope y'all are listening, okay? One day at a time. (laughs) (laughs) One day at a time. There's no hack or trick, even though people will mention some out there. Of course, there are tools that you can use to probably help you do certain things more effectively. But all in all, enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. So, my favorite part to talk about, other than languages, (laughs) I love food. (laughs) I love food more than anything I can think of, to be honest. Because Mm. I think it's like the perfect way to 
learn people's story, whether you're talking to the person who prepared the food, whether you're talking about the story behind the food that you're eating. And what I loved is that you have found a way to intertwine your love for language and also creating a tangible product that people can use for this communion that we have. So tell us a bit more about this book that you have. Yeah. So last year I completed a little zine, a little small. No lick around here. (laughs) (laughs) Big things. No lick around here. (laughs) It was truthfully, no, it, it, it was a, it was a huge labor of love to to do this um it's called taste buds volume one um because presumably there will be other volumes coming when i have the time to sit down and write them um but i i wanted to do this because as i said earlier you know food and language to me i wanted to find that connection i wanted to not find it i'm not christopher columbus i don't not like you know (laughs) i'm not gonna claim to find something that other people have you know been doing forever but um i wanted to explore i wanted to explore and and find a way to connect language and culture and so i have this taste buds volume one which is a reflection so um i have 15 chapters in there and each chapter is um, a cuisine a little vignette so to speak a little story about um, the culture a little story about the language there's some history in there there's some culinary history in there Um, some of my reflections are in there as well and then there's a I was going to say easy recipe, but there's one that's a little complicated, but most of them are easy enough for the average kitchen, kitchenista, kitchenisto. Um, and um, it was so much fun to test all of the recipes and to try them out. And, you know, I had to buy ingredients that I hadn't bought before. I had to fill up my spice cabinet with spices I hadn't used before. And it, for me, I intended it to be for someone who wants to try food, you know, at home from different parts of the world. Maybe they're bored of whatever they're cooking all the time and or maybe maybe they're not bored maybe they just want to try something new I encourage people to also listen to the corresponding episode to um, each chapter in the book so of the 15 chapters each one of them is also based based on inspired by an episode of my podcast as well. So it's something that you can listen to this show, you can cook, you can eat, you can have conversation, you can learn something new um, while you're doing it at the same time. And it is, uh, it's available online on Lulu and it's $20 US, 20 US dollars, I think. Um, And it's great. And I'm really looking forward to doing a second and a third <laughs> volume and, yes. and just, and, uh, you know, exploring different, different flavors and new flavors with, with those. Awesome. I love that so much. I actually have my, my copy I need to get. Cause I think one of the best ways for you to really understand food and the flavors that go into it, sometimes you have to try. So the good thing about cooking on light baking is very to the T you know, certain ingredients, this is the amount of the measurement that you have to use with cooking, you can play around with it. So I would highly encourage anyone who's looking for an experience like this, this is perfect to do with friends, having a little get together at home, as she mentioned, while you're cooking, you can listen to the podcast episode that is correspondent to it, and get your cooking on. So all of the links will be in the description box for y'all to find. (sighs) thank you (laughs) now i'm hungry (laughs) (laughs) all this talking about language and food and communion i love it so much and i just want to thank you again for taking the time to meet with me have this conversation with me and as i mentioned again all the links will be in the description box so that you can connect and follow Elle's journey she's on instagram she also takes you on the journey of her visiting different restaurants in um, new york so 
if you're ever in the New York area or just in the States looking for food places to eat, you can definitely check out her page. She can give you some awesome references for that as well. So thank you again, Elle. Thank you, Maggie. Thanks for having me. This is a wonderful chat. Awesome. My pleasure. And to my awesome listeners, thank you for listening to this episode, for watching this episode. More episodes to come for this season. I'm super excited for this. So I hope you're all excited, as excited as I am, and that you will continue to tune in every single week for a new episode. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Did you enjoy that video? Well, you'll enjoy more videos like it by clicking over here. So... Tap to watch now.